Hi, this is Kate, and in this video we're going to talk about the inferior vena cava. If you want to read more about the IVC, we have an article on the Geeky Medics website, and make sure to subscribe to be the first to know when we release new videos. So the inferior vena cava lies on the right-hand side of the abdominal aorta, and you can see the abdominal aorta here. So it's formed at the level of L5. So here you can see the common iliac veins, and these unite with L5 to form the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava then courses superiorly through the abdominal cavity to the level of T8. At this level, it passes through an opening in the diaphragm. This is the diaphragm here. And this opening that you can see, it's called a caval opening. It's named after the inferior vena cava. So within the abdominal cavity, the inferior vena cava has many, many tributaries, and these can largely be divided into three groups. So the parietal, and then two visceral groups. So visceral means organ. So the groups that actually drain the abdominal organs, and these can be divided again into a group of paired vessels and a group of unpaired vessels. So I'm going to talk about each of these three groups, and then I'm going to touch briefly on the portal circulation. So first, I'm going to talk about the parietal group, and I'm going to bring in those parietal vessels. Okay, so now we have the parietal branches in. Let's have a look at the three groups. So first of all, we have inferior phrenic veins, so on the right and on the left. And as their name suggests, they drain the inferior aspect of the diaphragm. As we move inferiorly here, we'll see a set of lumbar veins in the region um, of the lumbar vertebrae. Typically, there's four on the right. There'd also be four corresponding on the left, and these help to drain the posterior abdominal wall. Finally, here we have a median sacral vein, and again, as its name suggests, it will tell you that it's in the median plane, so you'll find it in the midline, and it courses along the sacrum superiorly here. So they're the parietal groups of veins that drain into the inferior vena cava. And next we're going to move on to some of those visceral veins, so some that are draining the organs in the abdominal cavity. And first we're going to look at those paired veins. Okay, so I've put in the paired visceral branches, uh, so let's take a look and see what these are. So first of all we have the suprarenal vein draining the suprarenal gland. We have a renal vein draining the kidney, and then we have gonadal veins. So these are in the male testicular veins, but in the female then they're the ovarian veins. So here we can see on the right hand side, each of these veins, suprarenal, renal, and gonadal, in this case testicular vein, all drain directly into the inferior vena cava. On the left hand side, it's only the renal vein that drains directly into the inferior vena cava. The left suprarenal and the left testicular vein, first of all, drain into that renal vein, and then the renal vein drains into the inferior vena cava. We can see here also the relationship of the superior mesenteric artery and that left renal vein. So the left renal vein passes underneath the superior mesenteric artery en route into the inferior vena cava. So the veins on the right and left are the exact same, suprarenal, renal and gonadal. It's just on the left hand side they take a slightly more indirect course into the inferior vena cava. So the next group I'm going to talk about are the unpaired visceral branches. So I'm just going to get rid of these paired branches and put in the last set. So I've added in the unpaired visceral branches. I've also added in the liver because these unpaired visceral branches link in with the portal circulation. So we're going to talk about both of these, the unpaired visceral branches and the portal circulation. So there's three unpaired visceral branches. So if we zoom in here, we can see them. There's the splenic vein coursing from the spleen, the inferior mesenteric vein, and the superior mesenteric vein. So that inferior mesenteric vein 
joins with the splenic vein, and the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric veins unite to form the hepatic portal vein. And it's this vein here that enters into the liver and delivers nutrient-rich blood. And from here, what happens is that the blood passes through the liver and then it's drained into the hepatic veins and into the inferior vena cava. So I'll just fade out the liver and you can see actually these hepatic veins. Okay, so now that the liver is faded, you can see the hepatic veins. So this is the hepatic portal vein, often just called the portal vein. And that's what receives the nutrient-rich blood from the splenic vein, which drains um, a component of the foregut, the superior mesenteric vein, which drains the midgut, and here the inferior mesenteric vein, which drains the hindgut. So once the blood, nutrient-rich blood is delivered into the portal vein, it travels into the liver, and the liver itself then is drained by three hepatic veins. So a left, a right, and an intermediate hepatic vein, and these three veins drain directly into the inferior vena cava. So the final thing I'm going to talk to you about is a little bit about when the portal circulation, um, that there's issues with it. So what happens, for example, in the case of portal hypertension, when not enough blood can actually get through the liver quick enough, so there's a decrease in venous return, the body actually tries to compensate. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, this compensatory mechanism next. So this compensatory mechanism revolves around the portal systemic anastomosis. So we've already discussed how the vast majority of the digestive tract is actually drained into the portal circulatory system, so via that hepatic portal vein. However, there are small regions that drain directly into the inferior vena cava, so they can bypass the liver. And this is important when there's issues with the portal circulation, so when the blood is not being returned quick enough to the heart. So what happens is that these anastomoses, so these little links that allow blood to bypass the liver, actually try to compensate for the loss in liver function. So I'm going to give you one example of how this works in the region of the rectum, but do note that there are other regions where this occurs. For example, um, in the anterior abdominal wall, the superficial veins, and also in the esophagus. So if we just look at what um, happens with the inferior mesenteric vein, we already spoke about how it drains into the splenic vein and eventually then into that hepatic portal vein, which you can see here. So if we go back and look at that inferior mesenteric vein, let's look at these superior rectal veins. So these are going to be veins that drain the rectal venous plexus, which drain into the superior rectal veins and into that inferior mesenteric vein. So the vast majority of the blood from the rectal venous plexus, seen here, drains into that superior rectal vein and into the inferior mesenteric. However, there's a small amount of blood that drains through the middle rectal veins, you can see here. So the majority is going to go into that superior vein and a small amount here is going to go into that middle rectal vein. And if we follow the course of that middle rectal vein, we'll see here that it enters into a larger vessel. This is the anterior trunk of the internal iliac vein, which eventually drains into the common iliac vein and into the inferior vena cava. So this is actually an option where you do not have to bring the blood through the liver. So it's designed only to take a small amount of blood. However, if there's issues, for example, portal hypertension, the body might try and reroute, fire more blood through those small middle rectal veins. And the consequence of this is that these small veins actually dilate beyond their capacity. And for example, in the rectum, they may predispose your patient to hemorrhoids. So in summary, these portal 
Systemic anastomosis are numerous. Okay, they occur in different regions. Here we've shown the example of the anastomosis in the region of the rectum. They can be used as compensatory mechanisms when blood flow through the portal circulation is impeded. But because they're small in size, that actually having a large amount of blood travel through them may cause issues in your patient. For example, in the rectum, it may predispose your patient to hemorrhoids. So what we've talked about so far are the main groupings of the tributaries of the vena cava, the inferior vena cava, and how uh, the portal circulation works and how that links in with the portal systemic anastomosis. So I'm just going to bring in a summary slide and then we'll have talked about all the different branches of the inferior vena cava. So now let's summarize on the tributaries of the inferior vena cava. Well, we started with the parietal group. So these were the ones that drained the inferior aspect of the diaphragm, so the inferior phrenic. We also had a group of lumbar veins and that median sacral vein. Then moving on to the paired visceral branches, we can see here that there's three in number. So there's the right suprarenal vein, the renal vein, and that ovarian or testicular vein, so the gonadal veins. So because this is males, it's the testicular. And then finally, when we were talking about the unpaired visceral branches, we had the splenic, which receives the inferior mesenteric vein. And we also have the superior mesenteric vein here, which unites with that splenic vein to form the hepatic portal vein, delivering blood into the liver. And the liver itself then is drained by three hepatic veins, which drain into the inferior vena cava. So that's the end of this tutorial. We'd love to hear your feedback on what you thought of this video and what topics you'd like us to cover in the future. You can do this by leaving a comment or dropping us an email.